flipping through the channels waiting for downloads to finish and I got to watch some right wing pundit shouting, 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 shouting on my television. The topic was how awful windmill power is. For real. One of the stuffed shirts kept saying that windmills are from the 12th century and we should move on already into the carbon based energy era. Hey, right wing, while we're talking about shelf life, maybe it's time you guys let the Bible go. Yeah, if we're talking about who can be the most modern and uh, the upside of relevancy, how about we let uh, the fairy tales go? We let, uh, we let go of the fairy tales with the talking snake and the virgin birth, no? No, you're not ready to live without your gospel training wheels? Gospel training wheels? Okay. I understand why the rich elite don't want windmills and solar panels providing power since it's, you know, it's hard to make money off of it. So let's compromise. Instead of burning coal and oil, let's burn up all the millionaire's grandchildren. How about that? You know, isn't it harder for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for rich people to get into heaven? So how about we start burning their assets? Just while we're brainstorming. Brian or Bon. Formed in 1973, ACDC were an essential listen for every good little headbanger. First album released to an international audience was High Voltage in 1975. And uh, don't bother sending me emails about the Australian release in 1974 because I don't live in fucking Australia. So the first singer was a bloke named Dave Evans, who they got rid of because he was a weak sauce in the way that he was a T-Rex wannabe. Yawn, yawn. Enter Ronald Belford Scott, Bond to his friends, who had been working for the band as a driver. A couple of auditions and voila, Bond starts singing for ACDC. And they make some of the finest rock albums you could ever wish for, including Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, Let the Be Rock, and Highway to Hell. My personal favorite was Power Rage, but people forgot that album almost as soon as it came out. They drink, they love, they laugh, they see the world. And then they go on tour for Highway to Hell. Bond guzzles down a wee too much pain go bye bye juice one night, chokes on his own vomit in his sleep. Within a year, like Keith Moon did it, John Bonham, John Lennon was shot then, like two years later, uh, Randy Rose crashed his plane only a few weeks after recording uh, Flying High Again, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Just don't think about it that long. Randy Rose crashed his plane only a few weeks after recording our Flying High Again, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Just don't think about it that long. Bon Scott was everything a rock and roll singer should be. He was cool, he was slick, and a boozer. Unruly, he was a rocker, he was a roller, he was a right out of controller, a wheeler, a dealer, a wicked woman stealer. He could swing blues and do metal siren, wails. But you cannot look at the history of Akadaka and fail to see that they didn't make any big money till Bond was dead. Brian's first album with the band was Back in Black, easily the most imitated rock album of all time. They followed that up with Those About to Rock, We Salute You, making sure that cannons could be fired indoors. Does it get any more phallic than a cannon blasting to signify that a concert is over? I'm a heat seeker. We get it. You have a cock. Into the mid-80s, ACDC recorded Flick of the Switch, Fly on the Wall, Who Made Who, which granted, outside of the title track and a couple of instrumentals, was a greatest hits album. But to be fair, it was a movie soundtrack, okay? To Maximum Overdrive, which I know sounds like a porn title, but it was a horror fantasy in which Emilio Estevez fought crazy machines in a big truck with the Green Goblin's face on it. Straight up, now tell me, Emilio. Mighty duck this. You should have mighty ducked that script. ACDC then t ACDC then took a break for a couple of years and came back with Razor's Edge and the ultimate beer commercial jingle Thunderstruck, which has been used to sell many products and give lap dances that extra oomph. Oh, you're going to law school? That's great. Little to the left, honey. Ooh, ah, uh -huh. and I'm done. Ultimately, the question of Brian or Bond comes down to, what would you rather be? A legend or a successful caricature? Because Bond is legendary, and Brian Johnson is the punchline to the aging rock star, Bry Guy. You had me with ball breaker, stiff upper lip, but rock and roll train? 
That couldn't have been more phoned in than if it was a Bell telephone ad. It's better to burn out than fading away, but in the end, we all want to get paid. Steve Miller told us to take the money and run. Somebody should have told him that gravy's not a beverage. Too easy. He's a big boy. Extra cheese on that whopper. I'm really in no position to make fun of somebody else's weight. <laughs> Me, very big and fat. I got that, ga uh, you know, Gandolfini with a goatee look going. That works with, uh, nobody. Forecast calls for light effacing.